12. 12 of New York City's skyscrapers make the Shard look like a cottage in the Lake District. That's way better. Hello, I'm Lawrence and I'm on a quest to uncover all of the memos that Britain and America lost in the pond and one of those memos pertains to city skylines. Now I'll be honest with you, being in quarantine for the last four years, I've almost forgotten what the Chicago skyline looks like. And in many ways, during this really odd period in human history, it's bizarre to think that some of the biggest skyscrapers in the Western Hemisphere are all but empty right now. And speaking of abandoned buildings, this video is sponsored by the good people at the Modern Frontiersmen, a group of independent journalists dedicated to documenting the then and now of America. They explore dangerous and forgotten places and seek knowledge everywhere they go. So if, like me, you love American history and the haunting beauty of abandoned structures, places and things, then go and check them out. I'm going to put a link to them down in my description below. Now, Britain boasts some impressive architecture of its own, but when it comes to the sheer size of skyscrapers, America makes the Shard look like Blackpool Tower. Yeah, I know that neither country comes close to the Burj Khalifa or the Jeddah Tower, but, you know, neither of those buildings fit into my carefully crafted niche. No, of course I'd love to visit Dubai. That's not what I'm saying. Basically, Britain's skyscrapers ain't got nothing on America. I know, I know, way to make this all about London, but the truth is nine out of 10 of the tallest buildings in England that aren't telecommunications towers are erected in the capital. Yes, erect, what word would you have used? Most of those are in the 700 foot range, including the Cheese Grater, One Canada Square, and the Newfoundland Quay. Were all of these made in Canada? Just two of London's skyscrapers stand above that range. 22 Bishop's Gate, which is still under construction, and the Shard. The former has topped out at an impressive 912 feet and is a very notable addition to the London skyline. But the Shard gives Britain's other buildings a massive inferiority complex, standing proud above Greater London at 1,016 feet since 2012. And having seen it up close myself last year, I can attest to its penetrating demeanour, piercing the sky like an icicle wielded by Bruce Willis in Die Hard 2. It's eye-catching is what I'm saying. He stabs him through the eye. That's why that's funny. Now, often omitted from lists like this is that there's a taller building in West Yorkshire, and that building is the Emily Moore Transmitting Station. However, even though that tower did once fall, it doesn't fall under the classification of skyscraper since it's not continuously habitable. Nonetheless, it does stand at an impressive 1,084 feet. Impressive, you say? America begs to differ. With height succeeding that of London Shard, America has not one building, not two, Two buildings, but really? 22 buildings, and not all of them, are in New York. Atlanta, Georgia is so full of surprises. 1996 Olympics, anybody? And, you know, it also has the busiest airport in the world. And if that's not impressive enough, the city has a building that's just casually standing around and has been doing since 1992 that is a whole seven feet taller than London Shard. In something of a rarity for America, it's named after a company, the Bank of America Plaza. And while it's by no means the tallest building in the United States, it is the tallest building in the American South. And get this, it is the tallest building in the United States to be located within a state capital. And that's because all of the other cities on this list, while major cities, don't bear that distinction. If you're going to San Francisco... This one only got into the list very, very recently. Topping out in 2017, the Salesforce Tower, it's not that rare, is it? Was taken just in time for me to see it with my own camera. And at 1,070 feet, you really can't miss it on the San Francisco skyline. In fact, if you don't include spires, this is the tallest building west of the Mississippi River, right? We've checked Honolulu doesn't have a megastructure, right? If you are the sort of person that includes spires, the tallest is to be found here. And in fact, Los Angeles has two skyscrapers that are taller than the Shard. The tallest of these, rather ironically, has an English-sounding name. It's called the Wilshire Grand Centre. And it takes us into new territory at this point because it is a staggering 1,100 feet, that's, what is that, 84 feet taller than the Shard and more than twice the height of the nearby Nakatomi building, RIP Hans Gruber. And as I said, having topped out in 2016, because of its spire, it is the tallest building west of the Mississippi River. Philadelphia keeps turning up in my life just recently, and not just on my toast. 
Just today I was having a conversation on Twitter about how Philadelphia was once the second largest city in the nation. It was also once the nation's capital and it turns out that it has a super huge skyscraper. Topping out in 2017, the Comcast Technology Center, is that its real name? Stands aloft at 1,121 feet, some 100 feet, or 16 Will Smiths, taller than the Shard. In fact, it would be the tallest building in the entire United States if you remove New York and Chicago. And speaking of which... Yes, the city I live in boasts five, five buildings that are taller than the Shard. And as a child, I was absolutely obsessed with one in particular, the Sears Tower, then the tallest building in the entire world. Completed seven years before I was born, it's since been renamed the Willis Tower, presumably not after actors that wield icicles. Nowadays, it's only the third tallest building in the Western Hemisphere and the 23rd tallest building in the world. What's happened? The world's grown up, if not figuratively. And there's no finer example of that than in the Big Apple. I'm, I'm not suggesting that all New Yorkers are immature. I'm talking about the buildings. They've grown up. It puts Los Angeles to shame, makes Chicago look like a row of grass. Is that really, that's the best we could do? 12, 12 of New York City's skyscrapers make the Shard look like a cottage in the Lake District. That's way better. Indeed, it boasts the two tallest buildings in the Western Hemisphere. Firstly, you've got the Central Park Tower, which topped out in 2019 at, get this, 1,550 feet. How many Will Smiths is that? Don't work it out now. We'll, we'll do it later. And perhaps the most impressive thing about that building is it's the tallest residential building in the world, and the wife and I are in the hunt for a new apartment, so keep your fingers crossed. But it's not the tallest building in America. That accolade goes to just one. Literally, it's one World Trade Center. Yes, completed in 2014 to replace the stricken Twin Towers in Lower Manhattan. It's a deeply impressive building. I love the way it shimmers and shines in the sunshine. Try saying that after 12 bottles of moonshine. Never drink that many. That's horrendous. Much like the Shard in that regard. I'm a poet like the Bard. But one way that is very different from the Shard is its height. It stands at an impressive and deeply significant 1776 feet as an ode to freedom and to stick it to the Brits again. That's it for this episode. Let me know in the comments below your favourite skyscraper in Britain or America. And let me know if you've been to the top of any of them. The only one on this list that I have is the Sears Tower slash Willis Tower. And no, I didn't go on the glass floor. She did. If you enjoy my insights of living in America and the differences between our two countries, you might want to follow me on Twitter where I talk about that very thing. I can be followed as always at Lost in the Pond US. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel so that my videos don't get lost in the pond. And a one World Trade Center size shout out to, no, actually Burj Khalifa size shout out to my patrons who make this channel possible. Just recently, our Patreon community has been growing faster than the world's architecture. If you would like to become a patron of Lost in in the pond and support everything we do here you can do so at patreon.com slash lost in the pond those of you that sign up uh, will get access to my secret live stream and if you pledge five dollars or more a month you'll get access to not just that but my secret podcast and more until next time stay safe stay home and stay watching bye Thank you for watching this episode of Lost in the Pond. Don't forget to hit my stupid little face to subscribe and please share this video with the world. Hit me up on Twitter, Instagram and Facebook. And if you would like to support this channel, please do so at patreon.com slash lostinthepond.